Welcome to another edition of 42 Straight Years In, Volume 1, Part 46. It is 94 degrees in Dallas, but it feels like 104. The heat index is high as hell. No crackheads so far today, but I got to make a run to Walmart, so I might run into a few, but none in the hood. Before we get started, you know what it is. Got my motherfucking shank ready to ride at a moment's notice. Everybody about that life, stay armed and extremely dangerous. Let's ride, y'all. Uh, Wednesday, uh, the state of Texas executed Billy Wardlaw. Uh, he declined the final statement. A few days prior to his execution, he wrote the parole board a letter stating in part, I came to death row a scared boy who made a poor choice. I will leave death row a man that others admire because I weathered the storms of life with the help of other people that love me. Wish we should all be so fortunate. It took him 34 minutes, I mean, 24 minutes to die. They don't get a, a last meal no more. The last meal is whatever they serving in the dining hall at the Walls unit for that day. They don't give them no special diet no more, a special meal. And uh, since January in Dallas, there's been 11 capital murders committed. That's just in Dallas County. We ain't only talking about what happened in Houston, uh, Sparrow County, San Antonio, El Paso County, Tarrant County, Fort Worth, Harris County, Houston, East Texas, West Texas, Corpus. We ain't going to even talk about capital murders committed in those cities and, and, and counties. The death penalty is not a deterrent to anything. It is 100% retribution. It, did not, it does not deter any crime. If the death penalty was a deterrent, the state of Texas should be the safest place in the United States. It's not. Look at how many people they kill. It don't change the thing. Because most criminals think they're going to get away with the crime. Or some guys kill a person out of emotion. He ain't even thinking about the penalty. They don't think about the penalty until they're in the county jail. They look around and see all these guys got life sentences of 99 years for the same crime you committed, now you think about the penalty. It's a little bit too late. Now, I was discussing parole in my last interview. And people want to know why a guy end up back in prison. Why did the recidivist rate is so high? We're going to use a hypothetical scenario. And I want people to respond in the comment section what they would do in this exact same circumstances. Take a guy been confined in TDCJ 25 calendar years. He has no family on the outside. Say for instance, now he's, we'll use the number, he's 54 years old now. He did all of his sentence every day of it. He had 25 years. He released to Dallas County, where they give him a bus ticket to Dallas. So he, he, that was his county of conviction. They only give you the bus ticket to your county of conviction, and, and, uh, or where you're going to return anywhere in the state of Texas. To go out of state, they give you a ticket to the closest city, to the state line, and you got to make it the rest for you on your own. They don't pay for your, you want to go to St. Louis, Missouri. They do not pay your bus fare there. You probably get as far as Texas County. And you on your own. Now this guy, they give him one hundred dollars and a government phone. Take this guy and place him in the heart of South Dallas. And they even got the South Dallas right here in Oak Cliff. We gonna place him up on Illinois. Nowhere to live. Only thing he has is the clothes on his back and one hundred dollars. In a cheap ass government phone. 
Let me see you make it from there. He don't know anything about resources. Where is he going to spend his first night at? So how do you guys going to survive? I look at some of the old schools come out. Hell, they don't even know how to use a smartphone. They used to the old rotary phone where you put your finger in and you dial. Now it's a smartphone. Hell, they don't even know how to turn it on. They don't know the first damn thing about logging into a laptop or a desktop. Because a lot of them in prison, they're too busy playing the prison game. They don't take advantage of going to one of the schools. They feel ashamed a 45-year-old man sitting up in a class trying to learn something. He feel like, well, I don't learn all. I'm going to learn up to this point in the hell with school. But how are these people going to prepare? Even though they have a changes class, which is mandatory, and you don't get a parole date, you don't get a release date until you complete that changes class. It's about 90 days long. You better hope they don't go on a lockdown or nothing because you got to continue. Those days don't even count. It's the days you attend class that count. And after graduation, they give you a parole date. But still, in that class, they don't teach you how to use a fucking smartphone. I was at down at the Greyhound, downtown Dallas. And uh, I just walked over there. I saw this old school guy. I can look at his way he's moving. I look at his body language. I can tell that he's been locked up a long fucking time. He got his little red bag in his hand, got on his prison clothes they give you. In, well, he came from Amarillo. Bill Clements, they release you from the unit. They take you to the bus station and release you. You, know, you ain't got to go to Huntsville if you're way out in West Texas. Anyway, he's standing there. I, I can tell he got his back up against the wall and he's looking at everybody. So I walk up. I say, hey, man, what's going on? He said, man, I just got released, man. I served 34 years, man. I said, what unit was you at? He said, I was at Bill Clements. I said, hell, I used to be at Bill Clements. So he kind of relaxed. I said, hell, I served 42. So he, he know what, I know what he's going through. He said, man, I got to get me a motherfucking shank, man. I hold these motherfuckers looking at me, man. I ain't used to this shit. I killed one of these motherfuckers right here at this bus station. I said, say, man, you got a life sentence on fucking parole. If you hurt anybody at this fucking bus station, if you even get in a fucking fight, they're going to send your ass back to prison, and you're going to never get out, and you're going to die in that motherfucker. I said, man, I didn't want to tell you the reason they're looking at you, because you look like a homeless person. Got a red prison bag in your hand, cheap-ass prison clothes on, prison shoes on. You look like a fucking homeless man. That's why they're looking at you crazy. They're waiting on you to say, hey, man, you got 50 cents? They don't know you just got out of prison. I got him to calm down. He was waiting on the halfway house to come pick him up. I told him, I said, yeah, I got a car, but uh, I can't drive you to the halfway house. They got a person to pick you up themselves from the bus station. If I would drive you there, you'll get a violation. And me, I got him to calm down. I said, man, you're going to be okay, man. You're going to meet dudes at the halfway house you know from prison, and they're going to show you the ropes here in Dallas because he wasn't from Dallas. I said, they'll show you the ropes here, man. And it ain't that bad. I said, hell, I made it. And I got him to calm down. That's just an example of what these guys go through from long-term imprisonment. Because the world's steady change. No one waits on you. The world is continuously going forward. We evolving. Uh, the definition of technology is to make human life easier. And those guys, unless doing the cell phone era in TDCJ, before they shut it down, some of those guys didn't deal with cell phones and all that shit, so he don't know how to use one. I had a little young uh, guy, 21 years old, taught me how to use a smartphone. Hell, I didn't know how to use it myself with a fucking college degree. Hell, I didn't know how to use the motherfucker. He taught me how to go on YouTube, how you Google stuff, all my settings. He taught me all that. And we're going to have to go, we have to go do my old Lord, because I put it in my community tab. We're going to deal with old Lord a little bit. Okay, the setting as usual is the Ramsey unit. Uh, we chopping corn. Uh, and I got a plot in the squad with me, man. He's so fucking tired. He ain't one hole. He tired as fuck. He's been up all fucking night. Ain't had no fucking sleep. Or he dragging, barely making. So he had told me on the trailers going to work, he said, man, I got to play on old Lord some kind of fucking way to get out of this work. I told him, I said, 
Oh, Lord, I talk to you. You got to know how to talk to this motherfucker. And he will talk to you. Man, we working. That fucking sun is beaming. So he told, oh, oh, Lord, what you want, nigga? He said, can I talk to you for a minute? He said, yeah, nigga, approach my horse. He walk on over. You got to stand in front of his horse. Unless you're a water boy or a striker like me, I can come from his gun. I always go on the side opposite of his gun. He was left-handed. I always go to his right side. So he don't get so fucking paranoid. Anyway, he said to me, he said, oh, Lord. He said, at least, nigga, you know my fucking name. He said, you've been a pretty good worker. What's wrong? He said, oh, Lord. He said, you driving the motherfucking hell out of us today. He said, that's my goddamn job, nigga. I drive niggas. Hell, I don't bullshit. I'm the fucking god of all niggas, and I drive your black ass in the goddamn ground. He said, oh, Lord, you ever been deer hunting? He said, well, hell, yeah, I've been deer hunting. He said, do a possum have a ass? <laughs> he said, your honor, your honor, he said, I'm not no fucking judge, you son of a bitch. I'm the Lord. He said, oh, oh Lord, I shot this fucking deer down in Hallville, Texas, out in the woods. He said, I shot that motherfucker with a third or six. You know that son of a bitch was talking to me? He said, what the fucking deer say? What did the motherfucker say? You should have shot him again, you crazy son of a bitch. You got a third or all six. <coughs> and, oh, Lord, said, said, Major, Major, come over here. We got a nigga that shot a fucking deer that was talking. The red rider ride up. He said, that nigga probably ain't shot no fucking deer. That probably was a damn bobcat or something. Hell, they scream like a fucking woman. That wasn't no fucking deer. Hell, ain't no deer talk. I got a couple of deers in my freezer. He said, this fucking deer was talking. He said, that motherfucker was looking at me. And I don't know if he said, God damn. He, the old Lord said, wait one minute, you son of a bitch. You blasted me in my goddamn face. You don't blast me the Lord like that, you black son of a bitch. I've sent a lot of motherfuckers a nigga hell for doing far less than what you just did. He said, oh, Lord, I'm just so tired. I don't mean to bless you. He said, well, tell me the story then, nigga. He said, I shot that deer. I swear he was talking to me. He said, did you shoot him again? He said, yes, sir, I shot him. He said, what happened then? He said, the motherfucker just laid down. He looked me in his eye. He looked me right in the eye and just laid on over and waved at me. The fucking deer waved at you? Yes, sir. Leg was kicking up and out. That was just muscle twitches. He said, no, sir. He said, no, no. And also, this, this, this goddamn catfish I caught. I caught a catfish out the train in the river. He said, that's something. It's big as your horse, old oh, Lord. A catfish big as my fucking horse. They must have been a thousand pound catfish. He said, I caught him on this damn hook. He said, what's the number of the hook? He said, hell, I don't know. It's one of them big ass hooks. He said, that's something that came out the water. Spit the hook at me and caught my motherfucking ass and dragging me in the water. And I said, oh, Lord. He said, God damn it. Did I save your nigga ass? Did I save your nigga? If I saved your nigga ass, you wouldn't be standing here talking to me. You sorry son of a bitch. You wouldn't be here standing. He said, oh, Lord, you saved me. I appreciate it. He said, I'm having a bad day today. He said, I'm sick. Every damn thing is hurting on me. Everything hurt. He said, I tell you what, nigga. Since you were such a nice nigga, you ain't one of them proper size niggas. I don't like them proper size niggas. He said, just stand here by my horse and walk. He said, oh, Scraker, you get over there on his row and take his row for him. I'm mad in the sun, but then put my ass to work. Now, I got to take his row all the way out. But on the next catch, I don't carry a row because I'm a Scraker. So he put my ass to work carrying his row. He let him just walk. He just lied to old Lord the rest of the damn day. But the old Lord told him. When he got ready to load up, he said, I'm going to tell you something, nigga. You hiked on me the goddamn day telling me all them fucking nigga lies, you son of a bitch talking deers, catfish catching you on the goddamn hook. He said, I'm going to tell your black ass one thing. You better eat your good breakfast in the morning and get you plenty of goddamn sleep. He said, I'm going to drive your goddamn ass in the morning. I'm going to drive you into the motherfucking ground. Oh, boy, he had to work the rest of the day. Then he, when we got in, oh, Lord, I took him to the hospital to see if anything wrong with him. He came back to the cell block laughing like a son of a bitch. He done got over on old Lord, which was rare. But if you was in one hole, this man know you work hard in a son of a bitch. He really didn't fuck with us. 
He says things and throw it out in the air. He don't pinpoint nobody because everybody in that fucking squad produce every fucking body. Now, this is where the problem come in. That we get one of them guys out of another squad or we get a new guy who thinking he penetrate the slick and can get over on this old man and he end up getting fucked over. Now, that's uh, my ranting and raving for the day. Keep your motherfucking shanks ready at a moment's notice so we can ride. And uh, to all my subscribers in, U in the UK and uh, New Zealand and, and down under over in Australia, Andy, hell, he probably sleep right now. It's probably fucking nighttime over there. Y'all like and subscribe. And I appreciate y'all in the comment section. I be getting some crazy ass shit in the comment section. A lot of things are pertinent to the video. A lot of things is, is bullshit. But uh, I still appreciate you watching. And I probably won't make another video today. I'll be, be back tomorrow. And uh, y'all stay safe, man. Thank you.